Hey everybody. So picture this. It's the late 1800s and you're a lumberjack in the deep forests of the northeastern United States. After returning to camp for the night, you gather with others around the fire to eat dinner and trade stories. As the sky grows darker and stars begin to wheel overhead, the men begin to tell strange tales of the things which lurk in the lumberwoods. Bizarre and frightening creatures like nothing anyone has ever seen, with impossible traits and characteristics. You want to dismiss it as pure fiction, the twisted works of an idle mind, but you can't help but look about at the darkened trees that surround you, as if hoping to catch a glimpse of something that might be hiding between the leaves. These were, as we call them now, fearsome critters. North American folklore and mythology is an essential part of the historical culture that makes up the fabric of modern North American life. Early stories, characters, and legends were born from the melting pot of countless diverse cultures that migrated to the continent in the 18th and 19th centuries, along with the ones that had resided there for thousands of years prior. Throughout the 1800s and into a fair bit of the 1900s, isolated groups of individuals in the still vast and unexploited North American wilderness began to develop stories and mythos of their own, for a number of reasons a way to pass the time, an explanation for strange events, a unique method of enforcing norms and proper behaviors. Notable among these groups were lumberjacks, fiercely independent loggers and woodcutters who sought their fortunes and their freedom cutting and transporting trees from the thousands of miles of forested slopes across the continent. For the reasons mentioned previously, lumberjacks and other workers in the area formulated some of the most unusual legends and lore seen in these days, likely due to their isolated nature. Chief among these were the Fearsome Critters. A fearsome critter is a fictional, at least to our knowledge, creature said to live in the North American wilderness which possesses strange characteristics, making it wholly unique from any ordinary beasts one might encounter. Stories of these animals were told from person to person in and around logging camps for close to a century and were passed primarily through word of mouth. And since I've got nothing better to do, why don't we take a look at a few. Now, an interesting trait of the fearsome critter is that very often it wasn't reported to be dangerous or fearsome, despite what the name might suggest. In reality, they were often more benign in nature, just strange little entities that served to explain uncertain events or boost the credibility of tall tales. The Axe Handle Hound of Minnesota was a dog-like creature reported to swallow axe handles that were left unattended. The tree squeak was a small beast resembling a weasel, which, although very rarely seen, would hide in trees and emit unusual sounds, ranging from a shrill squeak to a pig-like squeal or even a loud gunshot. The temperament of the tree squeak was said to be quite fair. The Sidehill Gouger, known by an assortment of other colorful names, was a mammal with one short pair of legs and one long, said to use this evolution to navigate steep hillsides, creating ridges on hills. The mythos surrounding this particular creature is surprisingly deep. If a gouger fell off a hill, or by chance found itself on level terrain, the creature would move in helpless circles, unable to climb to a height once again. Some rare gougers were born with their short legs on the opposite side, making them round hills in the opposite direction. Such variants were said to be shunned by normal-footed gougers. Particularly notable among this category of critters was the legendary Hoogag, a massive, bizarre-looking animal reminiscent of a moose, which seemed to have its work cut out for it. Residing in the northern states and ranging into Canada, the Hoogag had no joints in its legs, rendering it unable to sit or even lay down. Additionally, its massive lip prevented it from grazing like a normal herbivore. As a result, the Hoogag was forced to take its rest by leaning on the trunks of trees, from which it would also strip bark for nutrients. The Hoogag was reported to travel across the huge distances of the countryside, serving as an explanation for two types of unnatural forest phenomena, trees with their bark inexplicably missing, and trees found to be at an unusual angle. The Hoogag was considered a fine trophy for experienced hunters, who over time learned to notch trees in order to weaken them, causing Hoogags who leaned upon the trees to fall and land helplessly on the ground. But not all fearsome critters were harmless. Many served as dire warnings to lumberjacks of the very real dangers presented by work in the unexploited lumberwoods. 
The hide behind, as one might expect, was an enigmatic creature known to hide while stalking its prey. Described as being tall, thin, and covered in black fur, the hide behind was vicious and deadly, subsisting off the intestines of its hapless victims, whom it sprang upon while they traversed the woods. However, the creature's most dangerous trait was its stealth, as the hide behind was supposedly so adept at concealing itself behind objects or behind the observer that it was almost never actually seen until it was too late. The entity despised the scent of alcohol, however, so travelers were advised to drink before entering infested territory. The hoop snake may not have seemed particularly threatening on its own, but once it had grasped its tail in its mouth and curled into a hoop shape, it was reported to travel at upwards of 60 miles an hour. The creature's venom was toxic enough to kill another fearsome critter, the legendary Hodag, in minute proportions. The Hodag itself was one of the most infamous fearsome critters, said to be born from the remains of an ox. Massive, dangerous, and filled with malice. A number of tall tales chronicled the misadventures of those who attempted to combat the Hodag. The Splinter Cat, one among a range of cat-like creatures, was known to launch itself at trees in search of bees and raccoons, its natural prey. The creature's hard skull and great speed allowed it to shatter a great number of trees, something very often attributed to windstorms. But even more plentiful among the ranks of these peculiar animals were those that served no real purpose, simply used as tools with which to relay tall tales. California's Funeral Mountain was noted to house the aptly named Funeral Mountain Terror Shots, peaceful coffin-shaped quadrupeds that, for an unknown reason at some point in their lives, have a compulsion to travel down the mountainside and traverse the searing desert. Unfortunately, as soon as the terror shots made contact with the sand, they would suddenly and unceremoniously explode, therefore being unable to complete their journey. The fur-bearing trout is exactly what it sounds like, a run-of-the-mill river trout covered in smooth fur. The Totorode Shagmaw, found solely in Maine, had a pair of bear paws on its forelegs and moose hooves on its rear ones. It would alternate which pair it walked on in an effort to confuse trackers. The Cactus Cat of the southern states slashed open cactuses with bony protrusions on its forearms and waited for the cactus juice to ferment before getting trashed off its homemade mezcal. I'm not kidding by the way, that's, that's actually what it supposedly did. The Wapaloozy, native to the Pacific coast, dedicated its life to climbing up tall trees, something it was quite adept at. So possessed was the Wapaloozy by this urge to climb that, even after being killed, skinned, and fashioned into mittens, the mittens still attempted to climb up any stick they came into contact with. Perhaps one of the strangest, and certainly the most pathetic of all fearsome creatures, was the Pennsylvania Squonk. A misshapen, pig-like creature with sagging skin and bulging eyes, the Squonk was said to frequently hide itself away and constantly weep over its unfortunate appearance. The creature thus leaves behind a path of tears, making the tracking of the squonk an easy task. However, this proves to be futile. If captured, the squonk slowly begins to dissolve into tears, making it impossible to truly catch. And these are just a few of the countless fearsome critters that work their way into the strange folklore of 19th century North America, and there are likely many more that have since been forgotten. The role of the fearsome critter in storytelling is quite a lot like that of other mythological creatures. Dragons, unicorns, manticores, and so on. Whether to teach lessons, impart warnings, explain phenomena, or simply to tell a mean story, these creatures are nevertheless a fascinating relic of a bygone era, and it's quite interesting just how many of them have managed to be remembered to this day. And as long as we continue to remember them, the fearsome critters of the Lumberwoods will likely continue to live on in their own unique way. Thanks for watching.